Hey, hey, hey. I hope you guys enjoy these, what I'm calling podcast shorts for my burnout to all out community. This is just a little peek behind the curtain of the coaching that goes on inside of my programs. We're bringing to you some of the best nuggets and coaching I'm giving within hot seats of all of our different programs, whether it's our LinkedIn Method Academy our mini mastermind business basics, all the way up to our higher level mastermind. If you're hearing some of these questions and you're like, man, I wish I could get my burning question answered by Melissa. Hey, guess what? You could be featured on my podcast. If you've got a question that you want answered and you submit it to my team and we pick it, we will bring you here to the podcast for our podcast shorts and uh, do a hot seat with you. Where can you submit your questions? Send them to teamburnouttoallout.co. We'll make sure we drop that in the show notes for our podcast shorts. And I hope that you guys find as much value in these shorts as our clients do inside the program. Need some effective tactical advice that actually helps you get results and makes a real difference in your life and business? You've come to the right place. If you're finding yourself here today, it means you're getting ready to gain serious traction in your business, rapidly multiply your income and impact, and you're ready to make it happen while living all out. Guys, I'm Melissa Henault, your trustworthy corporate dropout turned six-figure business burnout turned happy and healthy CEO of a multi-million dollar online business, and you're listening to the Burnout to All Out podcast. On this show, we're serving up innovative growth strategies, simple implementation methods to put them into practice, and action-stimulating inspiration tailored specifically for the modern entrepreneur. Let's dive in. Well, I got from a content perspective, at least in being, you know, to say consistent, I've say I've been consistent now for about a month and I did my first video. I didn't do it live, but I did my video (laughs) and just posted it out there. So my plan is ideally to do one a week, but it felt good just to get that one done. So for me, that was a win. That you did your video? Yeah. Awesome. Maybe eventually I'll work to a live, but I made it to the video and then I went out and I just posted it directly in there. So perfect. And just so everybody knows long term, like you can always take a video and make it look as though you went live. You can put it through a broadcaster and it'll go out like it was live. Some of you might have seen this during my launches. We stream live at lunchtime. It's recorded and then we do a replay later that night. And we'll have 50 plus people actively watching it because they're be- all being notified that it's streaming live when we actually just uploaded the recording. So for those of you who get stage fright, feeling like if it's recorded live, it's live and I mess up, I'll never be able to take it back, pre-record it. If that reduces the anxiety, and then you can upload the video through a broadcaster like. So my content, at least from a consistency standpoint, is going well. I don't know what my problem is. But I continue to struggle with the whole connection piece. And here's where I seem to run maybe into some problems or whatever. I mean, I could spend easily, I can spend like a couple hours a day trying to find my ideal clients. And that's hard for me to find them. I don't know what it is. I mean, I do because too, I'm like many on here are looking for high performers and me specifically like over 40 higher performers. So a health coach, but with a focus on brain health. And for example, you know, I do the Mark Hyman's and those people of of the world, not all, but so many of the comments are from other health coaches or other, you know, functional medicine doctors and those, and I'm starting, unless I'm wrong, I would view them, would they be considered my competitors? So it's not necessarily somebody I would want to connect with. In some cases, I may have followed people you know, just to kind of see what they're doing. And then I was like searched for who would maybe be my five ideal clients. And I spent forever because they're supposed to be those who are because I'm like, okay, here's somebody who's kind of seems to fit the profile. And then I go out and they're not active. The only thing they might comment to is happy birthday, someone or congratulations on your anniversary. Well, let's, let's 
talk about not active really quick because we had this conversation earlier today. Okay. What's the difference between people not being users of the platform and the, you don't want to be, let, let me, let me back up. Only 4% of users of the platform post anything at all mm-hmm. right, and engage, right? The other 96% are scrolling and patrolling, right? So just because all they do is send happy birthday messages doesn't mean they're not actively in there seeking and searching. They're just not confidently engaging, right? When I say make sure they're active, I mean, go to their profile and make sure in the last, you know, two to three months, they've made a post. I I would give people, you know, the benefit of the doubt. Like (laughs) I used my husband as the example this morning. He was on LinkedIn this weekend. I know he's on there every single week. If you go to his account, he hasn't made a post in four months and he hasn't engaged on anything this year. But he's on, he's a senior vice president who's on there all the time. So it also need to know your avatar, right? Depending on how busy and high profile these people are, they can be on the platform or not in the platform. It doesn't mean that your content's not being seen. So I do want you to keep that in mind, just food for thought. So for some of the content I put out and people have commented, if I know for sure that they aren't my target market, I'm assuming I don't reply or I'm assuming I don't send a connect request because there really wouldn't be somebody who would benefit my network. So not necessarily. Okay. Because they could be connected to a lot of people who are your ideal audience. The whole birthing of me really (laughs) running on LinkedIn started Mm -hmm. with someone who was not my ideal avatar. Have you guys heard this story? When I first really got running on LinkedIn, like, I mean, putting rocket fuel on it, I was already leveraging it, had already done some behind the scenes growth on LinkedIn that got me to where I was and I was able to leave corporate. I made a post on a Friday morning before boarding an airplane uh, about gone are the days of corporate America, wearing my suit from East Coast to West Coast. I was in a pair of yoga pants and a little bun on the top of my head with little fur boots and said, this is my new business suit. Okay. I don't even remember what else I said, but I hit post and like freaked out because I felt like that was like the final burning ship. I'd never be able to go back to corporate after that post. Got on a plane five hours later, got to the West coast, opened up my phone and had 254 comments. And I was like, what is going on? And this is back when I had maybe a thousand people in my network. What happened, and keep in mind during those days, my ideal avatar was a female in big pharma or a pharmacist, female, middle-aged, a male general manager of North America for a Fortune 500 that was a good friend of mine that I had worked with previous, saw the post, and he had recently recently been promoted into this big role. He was already like a head executive when I was at the Fortune 500 but he supported my post. He commented on it and supported it. And guess what happened? He had like 25,000 people in his network and I had like 1,000. Then his entire network who was active during that time saw his support of my post. And don't you know, every middle-aged woman who wanted to get the hell out of corporate saw that post and was like, commented on it, requested to connect with me was curious about what I was doing. And so my point is, don't negate your non-consumer or non-target audience just because they're not your network. This is why people who are highly leveraged with networks, even if they're not your ideal audience, can be huge for you. You can strategically connect with people who may not necessarily be your target audience but have a network of eight to 10,000 people with a conglomerate of them who are your ideal audience, like this guy, right? And had I refused to connect with him, this program probably wouldn't even exist. (laughs) But when that happened, I realized the power of LinkedIn and the second and third degree connections. And If you feel like you're screaming into the void when you post content on Facebook or Instagram, struggling to find a sustainable and scalable lead generation process that sticks, and 
you just want someone who's been there and done that to reveal their secrets, then it's critical that you register to save your spot ASAP. During this live masterclass, you'll get to steal the exact strategy I used to scale my income from $0 to 1 million in just 19 months without spending a fortune on ads or suffering from burnout. Simply check out the show notes of the podcast episode for the link to register for your free spot in the LinkedIn lead gen masterclass. And don't worry, even if you miss a couple of days or you can't make it to all the training sessions, we'll deliver the replays directly into your inbox daily so you can watch them on your own time. All you have to do is make sure you sign up for the masterclass before registration ends. Visibility of what you put out and who you're connected with. And a whole other strategy with that is knowing who is highly connected on LinkedIn that's in your network and make sure you're scratching their back liking their content, supporting their post, because they're much more likely to reciprocate on yours. Right. right? Okay. And one follow-up, I guess, question is currently my profile is set for B2C, hence, and that's kind of what all my content has been focused on as well. I do know that I want to also kind of move to a to a B2C as well. So my question is, is that something that I should first start building one before I kind of start working the other, or should I look at doing it simultaneously? So you mean B2B and B2C? Like, yeah. 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 No, you can do both at the same time. It's just that certain days your content's going to speak B2B and certain days your content's going to speak B2C. Like B2B, their their pain point and your solution is going to look a little different than your B2C. Right. Right. And then I need to then switch. I mean, my profile would probably, I would need to kind of, switch that up a bit too. In, well, you wouldn't or... want to include both, right? Like in your summary section, you would maybe want to speak to each in like separate paragraphs as to how you can work with them. Okay. A number of people in the academy who consult and like they do one-on-one, let's say they do like one-on-one consultancy, high ticket packages, but then they also do like corporate contracts. And so like Pitching to corporations is very different than like the one-on-one coaching that they're doing. Right. Your content needs to, on different days, needs to speak to those two different demographics. And in their summary, they need to make sure they're speaking to who they help, corporations and individuals, right? Okay, great. And the last thing I would just challenge you to consider, because I know you're kind of like over 40 high performers, where do I get started? Why did you get into the health coaching with a brain focus? What got you into it? Well, I guess the brain health piece came to the direction of I've been, if you want to say, my parents, I have relatives, friends, parents, or whatever that have all gone down the road of dementia or Alzheimer's and things to that effect. But the health coaching piece kind of came the way of when my husband was sick and I stopped taking care of myself. After he passed away, I just I focused on getting healthy. And it was through that that I realized, and I had gained a lot of weight. So by going through kind of that transformation myself, I also noticed how much more energy I had, how more focused I was, how I could get things done yeah. more quickly, you know, as a result of that. So it was kind of a combination of those two things. So, and you can use some of that in your content, right? That you okay. can make out your own personal story. For many of you guys, your product, your program, your business, you created because of a problem that you encountered, right? Or you launched. What was your previous career prior to this? Different positions within the financial services. Okay. I'm always talking about like, just pick a pick a niche and get yep. started consider picking the financial services space because you have a background in it and you can see it. Um, It's a point of connection. And then you're not feeling like a shot in the dark with high performers. You're just starting with the financial space, right? Okay. Okay. Great. Thanks guys so much for listening in on today's podcast episode. And I can't wait for you to see my upcoming guest in the next episode. You are going to love this keynote speaker. Hey, here's the deal. If you liked this, please subscribe and leave a review. And you want the latest online business growth strategies and exclusive LinkedIn pro tips sent straight to your phone? Text the word UPDATE to 704 704- 
318-318-2285. That is text the word update to 704-318-2285. Can't wait to see you guys. Come find me over on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, wherever you like to hang. I cannot wait to hear how you are enjoying and applying what you're learning. You guys reach out to me over on social because I love hearing what's resonating with you. When you reach out to me and you send me those personal DMs, they really do impact the content I continue to bring forward to you. So again, come find me, Melissa underscore Hinault over on Instagram, Melissa Hinault over on LinkedIn and Facebook. Can't wait to see you guys over there.